Welcome to Everything Distributed. Today we are going to talk about atomic commit, and we are going to talk、uh, introduce one particular protocol called two phase commit. And the content is based on chapter nine in Martin's book and the Wikipedia page. And actually, like Wikipedia has a very thorough discussion on two phase commit. Last time we talk about transaction. So the idea is that you use,、uh, you send out transaction, and then transaction may contain like multiple operations on certain datas, and then for the outcome of the transaction, it's either commit or abort. And four important property is asset autonomy, consistency, isolation, durability. And today we are going to talk about like. In practice, in distributed storage system or in distributed database, how are they going to、uh, perform transactions, and then what kind of protocol that we need in order to ensure this kind of properties? And if you remember, we talk about distributed storage. We start with this called replication. So, what's replication? You have the same set of data. Then you are going to replicate them on different machines, and all the machines or all the server have the same data. And we also talk about sharding. So sharding is different. It's that we have a whole data set, which is、um, yeah this place. This is the whole data set, but like based on my keys. I'm going to partition the data into multiple places, and then each server they will have a different copies of the data. So that's called sharding. Then now, then now the full picture is that suppose you have nine machines, then you are doing the three kind of sharding: red one, blue ones, and orange one. And then for each set of servers, you are going to do the replication. And of course, this is just a logical sense, and any server can have any balls in this、uh, illustration. And why do I discuss this? Because、uh, there are two concepts that、uh, we are usually、uh, we usually use in this kind of a、uh, system. So for consensus, is that we have a、uh, send operations. Oops, sorry, here's a typo.、Uh, we have.、Uh, Send operations on multiple servers, so it's like kind of here. You are dealing with the same data, and then you want to do the same operation on different servers. So this green one is that where you are going to use consensus to achieve something. But then for the topics of today, it's atomic commit. Here we want to have a different operations. On different servers. So here, let me change the color. Let's use the orange one. So now for atomic commit, actually, what we, uh, the servers that we are that need to participate are the blue, uh, the orange ones here, the red one, blue ones, and orange one. The those are the servers that are going to join the atomic commit protocol. Okay. And then all of them might do different operations. So he, then the properties that we want them to achieve, or we want this protocol to achieve, is that all the servers that may may have a different shard because they each of them have a different partition of the data. They need to agree on whether I want to commit or apply this transaction or not. And then if they all commit, that's good. But if someone said that I want to abort the transaction, then you have to abort. So roughly speaking, that's the idea for atomic commit. So the key is that you have all the server need to participate, but at this server they may have different set of data, and then in the end they also need to agree on something. So this is some kind of consensus or agreement problem. And then、uh, for because we are focusing on the transaction, so there are only two options of the outcome. Either commit or abort, and then the setup is that there's a single non-leader, or sometimes we call it coordinator, 
that will help all the servers to achieve the outcome and to solve the problem. So here's an illustration from last time. This is our simple trick session. I want to transfer three dollars from A account to B account. So if you remember from last time for transaction, we have a command say, I'm going to begin the transaction. Then there are two things I want to achieve. I want to reduce $3 from A's account and then A $3 to B's account. And then that's it. I'm going to end my transaction. And then I, you submit this request to the coordinator and then coordinator can tell you that whether it's success, succeed or not. If it's successful, then that means that you can come in the transaction. If not, that means that transaction is aborted. Then as a user or as an application developer, then you need to decide on what to do with this transaction. Okay. So then also from last time, in terms of database, because it's all that read and write primitive, what exactly do we mean by reduce $3 from A's account? That means that you need to read A's account and then I minus three and then write back to A's account. And similarly for the B one. And oh, okay, actually here I just found out a typo. For this one, this should be B equal to uh, B plus three because you're going to S three into B, okay? And now let's look at the setup. So the setup is I suppose you have a two machines and one of the machine, one of the server has the, the, the data for A's account, the other server have B's account. So each of them has a different shard. And then we want to agree on whether we can commit this transaction or not. And then that's the setup for atomic commit, atomic commit problem. Okay. Then now we're going to talk about two phase commit. And in short, is 2PC. And intuition is actually very simple. It just I do the voting. We have a coordinator, and then coordinator need to collect all the votes from everyone. I mean, in this case, just a red one and blue one. I mean, that every server that needs to be involved in order to complete a transaction. And then once the coordinator knows the result, it will tell the red one and blue one and all the other participating servers say that now you can come in a transaction or you have to abort the transaction. And then that's it. Okay. And now let's look at that uh, in more details. How does this, uh, how is this working? So the first thing is that I have a client and then it will tell this like the coordinator saying that, hey, I'm going to transfer $3 from A's account to B's account. Then what's he going to do? The coordinator will send the prepare message to the server. And then the server will check that. Can I access A's account or not? And then the blue one will check, can I access B's account or not, right? And there are lots of uh, different possibilities. For example, if some other is accessing A's account, so maybe a user A tried to add more money to his account, or that, that the, the, this user A trying to transfer money from, that, from A to B and then A to C, then I all sorts of different things. And then here, we want to make sure that there's no concurrent observe, uh, operations so that uh, locally the, the red server can decide whether it can lock the ss 2 as account or not, okay? And then here, so you can decide whether I, I can come actually commit the transaction or whether I need to abort because there are some reasons I cannot complete the transaction. And let's assume that, okay, it can actually come in uh, it can actually uh, come in the transaction. So it will tell the coordinator say that, yes, I can come in. And the blue server also say that, okay, yes, I can come in. Then in this case, that this thing is locked. So no other transaction can access this thing. And only this transaction can modify this value. So that's the first phase. 
then internally after the coordinator collects these two votes then you will check so in this case it received two commits so you will say that okay i have two commits and that's good then we can actually commit this uh, transaction so the second phase and let me erase this so the second phase would be say that the the coordinator will tell uh, REST server said, okay, we are going to commit. Then it also tells blue server said that we are going to commit. Then, then once receive it, they can start doing the transaction. So in this case, it will minus three, uh, it will actually plus three to B's account, it will minus three in A's account. And then you will tell the coordinator said acknowledgement said that hey the transaction is done, and tell the coordinator said yes the transaction is done, and then finally the coordinator can tell the client said that now you successfully move three dollars from A's account to B's account. So that's it. Two phase very simple. It says the coordinator sends something send prepare message to the servers and if server said yes that's good then they tell the co uh, coordinator and coordinator check if everyone votes for commit then you tell the two other server the, the, the old everyone said that okay now you are good to go you can come in uh, apply and come in a transaction and then once it collect all the acknowledgement it can return back to the client okay but if like it, if that like, uh, some of the servers said that okay actually I have a board, then the client would say that nah, no sorry the coordinator would say hey everyone you know what you have to abort because like, some of the servers said that it cannot obtain the value you cannot obtain the lock, then in this case everyone has to abort. Okay, so it's a very simple logic and then everything is through the this leader or coordinator. Now let's look at some property. The first one is the, the final thing I said is called unilateral abort, meaning that any server can say that, okay, if I want to abort, then you have to abort. And why do we want to abort? And then first, the most common reason is that locally, I cannot obtain a, a lock because as someone else, uh, my uh, there's a uh, other concurrent transaction try to say modify A's account so i need to wait until that transaction is completed then i can check that how many dollars is already has uh is still inside A's account and then the reason is that um, it's possible that the, the transaction cannot actually be executed because i uh, may be A's account is already zero so I can name it minus three from A's account. So that's why I have to wait for all the concurrent operation to complete it and obtain the lock. And then I need to make sure that, that actually the transaction uh, satisfy the business logic. And then the second one, this is not enough resource here. It's also possible due to the software or hardware, maybe that the workload is too high. I do not have enough uh, memory. I do not have CPU to complete some of the more complicated operations. So there are many different reasons for abort, but in this particular protocol to PC, is that any server say that, hey, I need to abort, then the coordinator will decide that, okay, everyone, we have to abort, okay? And, and yeah, and the other not so desirable property is that actually this protocol is blocking, especially when they are failure. Because uh, if you check the, the coordinator, it has to wait for everyone's vote to ensure that, I, okay, uh, there's no abroad and then everyone can come in. And in the worst case is that coordinator basically just crush, then client does, cannot get a reply. And then the server does not know, but the, yeah, the red one and blue server here do not know that whether to commit or not. 
and then that's a very uh, undesirable property. And let's look at in more details. In terms of correctness, what does this protocol achieve? So if you remember, when we define correctness, there are two things we want to consider. The first one is safety, and then the second one is liveness. So at this point, I encourage you to stop a little bit and then try to think about that. How do I define the safety for two-phase uh, commit? How do I define the lifeless for two-phase commits that we just learned? And then for safety, so that's uh, the key for atomic commit. It's some kind of agreement protocol, right? So you have to, in the outcomes, let's say choice or that the output have to be the same for everyone. And then the second one is that this unilateral abroad, meaning that if any uh, any server or anyone votes on abroad, then everyone else has to abroad. And then last through that coordinator-based design. And liveness is the one that's probably a little trickier, especially it's very different from all the pro consensus protocol that we saw before. And here we have a very strong precondition is that if there's no failure at all, then I'm sure that every server will eventually terminate with a choice. Every ser server knows that whether to uh, commit or abort transaction. But if there's failure, then it's much more trickier. And then if we consider the, the very basic protocol that I talk about, then actually there's no guarantee. Of course, in, uh, in practice, especially that very large scale distributed systems, you have to deal with failures. And in practice that there are many different ways of dealing with it. The first one is kind of use timeout and then say that if I wait too long, then I automatically that I'm going to abort the value. And then I also can use a write ahead log. I can write my decision into a disk. Then I this the log one and combine with a recovery protocol. I can be sure that as long as I can recover from my crush failure, then this atomic protocol the two-phase commit can terminate. And of course, that it gets like, very complicated if you want to tolerate all kinds of failures. And then like, there are some other protocol, for example, three-phase commit that address the problem and then try to make sure that uh, it's not blocking all the time. And it's a slightly more complicated and then it's not perfect. And... Yeah, but like in practice, that usually two-phase commit and three-phase commit work out well. Okay, and then here are two very interesting exercises for you. The first one is that we already learned about consensus, and then for example, Pexos. Then can we actually use Pexos to replace two PC to achieve that similar result? And then if you remember, I begin with like this uh, transactions property. Uh, acid, and then uh, only AID, atomicity, isolation, and durability, they are related to kind of database property. So, yeah, analyze like how is 2PC help to achieve atomicity, isolation, and durability. And then that's related to the properties of a 2PC. Okay. So that's all I want to talk about today. And then takeaway is that we learn about 2PC and we know that it's helping to uh, distribute the database to solve a transaction. And then we also discuss the detail for the 2PC protocol. We also discuss the properties. Okay, that's all. Thank you.